Welcome back to another short video on biomechanics and here we discuss a very crucial concept in basic biomechanics that is the arthrokinematics and osteokinematics. You might have heard the term osteokinematics and arthrokinematics. Many confuses it with the term closed chain kinematics and open chain kinematics. So what is arthrokinematics? What is osteokinematics and what differentiate them? How to understand the movements and what are the osteo and arthrokinematic movements that are happening in human body? More emphasis will be on arthrokinematic motions throughout the discussion. So let us discover what is arthro and osteokinematics in very brief lecture. Yes, arthrokinematics and osteokinematics. Before understanding arthrokinematics, let us just have a quick look on what stays osteokinematics. Osteo in the sense means uh, it relates to the bone. Okay, so osteokinematics are movement. Kinematic means a movement. Okay, kinetic means force, kinematic means a movement. So the term itself explains that this is the movement of the bone. So, the movement of the bone as a liver or a movement of the entire bone is known as osteokinematics. You can see that, for example, femur, this femur, this is a long liver. Okay, the femur can be considered as the long liver. So, when this femur moves like this, the entire motion of the femur, which is of course physiological movements. Okay, these motions are known as osteokinematic movement. So this is the movement of bony liver as a whole. Okay, bony liver as a whole. They are normal physiological motions in the body. They are normal physiological motions in the body. So what is osteokinematics? Osteokinematics are the movement of the bone as a whole. And can we see it? Can we see it with our naked eyes? Of course we can see it. For example, this is shoulder flexion. That is a movement of humerus. Okay. And of course the other bones in the elbow and forearm and the wrist also. But just consider the humerus. That we can see that movement. So osteokinemans are a visible movements also. Osteokinematic movements are visible movements also. These are normal physiological movements. They are the bony liver as a whole. The bone liver or bone as a whole is moving and it is visible also. So these are some of the basic characteristics of osteokinematic movement. Now, if you take an osteokinematic movement, for example, the humerus uh, is moving on the scalp shoulder flexion okay you can see that one of the segment will be fixed and the other segment will be moving of course sometimes both the segments can be moving for example scapula helps in humor reflection that that's not the general case but in general case mostly one of the bony segment of course these are the movements happening in the joints right one of the bone segment will be stationary and other one will be moving so one body component will move one segment move and other is stationary and other one is stationary okay so this is uh, the normal case of osteokinematic movement right down here it is mostly exceptional cases are there when there is integrated motions you don't have to you don't have to confuse about that but now we are studying the basics so in basics remember mostly one segment is fixed for example in hip flexion your acetabulum or the hip bone is fixed whereas the femur is moving whereas in weight bearing knee flexion the femur is moving and the tibia is fixed Okay, similar to that, the one segment is fixed and the other one is moving. Of course, this osteokinematic movement can be represented by few factors. Like uh, it has an axis of movement, right? It has an axis of movement. For example, the shoulder flexion which I described earlier is taking place in the coronal axis or this one, horizontal axis, that is the X axis. So this happens in that axis, so it has an axis. So when it has an axis, it will definitely have a plane. Of course, it has a plane and then it has a direction of movement. It has a direction of movement. Okay. 
So when you are asked to write differentiate between osteo and arthrokinematic, write down this one and give an example. For example, for example, shoulder flexion. In shoulder flexion, what happens is the axis of movement is x-axis, the plane of movement is sagittal, and the direction of movement is a flexion. And when it is moving backward, it's known as extension. Same x-axis, same sagittal plane. So this is how you can denote an osteokinematic movement. I just went on telling this uh, uh, x-axis, y-axis, sagittal plane, etc. very fast. That's because I think that, I assume that by now you have studied axis and plane very thorough. If you are not thorough and if you are watching this video for the first time, kindly look onto the video on planes and axis, an exclusive video with very simplified explanation. And the link is given above, right? Yes, so this is all about the osteokinematic movement. So any movement that is being observable in the human body is osteokinematic. For example, the neck flexion is an osteokinematic, lateral flexion osteokinematic, this one next osteokinematic, the rotation also an osteokinematic movement, all right? Now, our point of discussion is, what is arthrokinematic movement, okay? That's something bit complicated. Huh? What is arthrokinematic movement? Always try to figure out in biomechanics what the term denotes. For example, in previous video, we had the center edge angle. Center means something about the center is that edge means edge is the angle means that means an angle. So it's a humeral, femoral head, it's the acetabular end and it's an angle. Similar to that, what is arthrokinematics? Kinematic again means a movement. Kinetics means a force. These are all basic biomechanics. And arthro means it denotes denotes the articular surface okay it denotes the articular surface movement so the articular surface movement is known as the as arthrokinematic movement the bone liver as a whole when it is moving it is osteokinematic for example in uh, acetabulum and uh, femoral head is here okay our uh, femoral head is here for example when femoral head is going for flexion that flexion is known as an osteokinematic movement but there is that articular surface of the femoral head okay as a tabulum hip joint articular surface is this one inside this articular surface the femoral head and the acetabulum can move that movements are known as the arthrokinematic movement so the movements that are taking place in the in the joint in the articular surface of course joint is the articular surface that movements are known as the arthrokinematic movement am i clear so don't get it confused okay these are the movements that are happening inside the movement inside the joint of course when it is inside the joint can you see it no it's not visible normally it is not visible in normally okay this is not visible normally okay so these are some of the features of arthrokinematic movement it's a movement that is taking place in the articular surface they are non movable okay non not visible right and there are two segments right one segment which is moving okay every joint there is a moving segment and there is an which move segment? Non-moving segment or a permanent stationary segment. Stationary segment. Usually, arthrokinematic movements occur as articular surface movement of moving segment on the non-moving segment. Not the non-moving on the movement, moving segment, but usually it happens as the movement of the moving segment usually Okay, there may be exceptions, there are exceptions. Usually, arthrokinematics are movement of the moving segment of a joint on the non-moving or stationary segment, which is relatively same with the osteokinematic movement. Osteokinematic movement also mostly one segment is moving, another one is stationary. Now, there are exceptions in arthrokinematics for this consideration. So, if you have confusion with this statement, just completely avoid that statement and focus on the other things that's more than enough now what are the types of arthrokinematic movement the osteokinematic movement types are which are the movement types that's a flexion extension abduction adduction, medial rotation lateral rotation 
whatever the movements that happens in the human body, there are all types of osteokinematic movement. Arthrokinematic movement can be divided into three basic types. Can you predict that? It's so simple. You might know the name. You might know the name. They are the rolling movement. They are the rolling movement. Then that is the gliding movement. And then there is the spin. So these are the three basic movements that are happening in terms of arthrokinematics. Let us examine one by one. What is rolling? Of course, for example, let us take an example of a tire. Okay, we, we have seen cycles, motorcycle, cars, etc. When car is running on a road, for example, this is the road and this is the tire of the car. Okay, this is the tire of the car. And uh, at this point, you can see that this point of contact of the ground to the of the tire on the ground, let me call it A. Okay, this is scenario one. What happens when tire moves from here to here like this? Okay, when it rolls from here to here, what can happen? That point of contact A will definitely move backward when the car is moving forward. If it is moving for reverse, it changes. Okay. And another point of contact actually comes with the ground. Let me call that point B. Okay. Now, if the car rolls on again, what happens? The same point B moves backwards like this. The point B moves backward and another point comes in contact. That point is known as a C. Okay. So if the car is rolling again, point D will come in contact. So how can you describe rolling? Rolling is a movement in which, rolling is a movement in which at every time a new point comes in contact with the articulating surface or the uh, contact surface. So rolling is a movement in which every time a new point comes in contact with the articulating surface. So these are all new points A, B, C, D. Not the A itself is moving like this. Okay, that's not the movement happening. At the same time, you can also note that the point of contact in the ground, for example, let me call it 1, 2, 3, 4. This is also changing. It's not in the one, in this four motions are happening, but from one it moves to two, from three, four. So in rolling, both, what happens? Both moving segment, moving segment, and the opposite segment, opposite segment moves or makes new point point in contact new points of contact so in rolling this is something that is going to confuse in rolling not just the moving segment moving segment makes every time new point of contact you know that right now you can see that very simple it is but at the same time the opposite segment or the stationary segment which is to be stationary is also making points of contact or new points of contact that means new point of every time in rolling new point of contact a different point of contact in the moving segment comes in contact with the or new point of contact of the other segment that means two new points are there so you cannot call this as a uh, stationary segment this is a segment on which movement is happening so the rod can be considered as the segment on which movement happens movement happens okay so this particular case is only when there is pure rolling Remember this one, only when there is pure rolling, I will make it a star, okay? Only when there is pure rolling and in human body, you cannot find pure rolling motion always. So different scenarios happen. For example, this is the femur and this is the tibial condyle, uh, tibia. What happens is that when short, um, hip joint is going for flexion, there is, you can see that, uh, for example, let me mark with the pen some points in the uh, bone. For example, point 1, uh, point 2, point 3, 1, 2 and 3. Yes, very good. Okay. Now, just look at this one. Can you see the points labeled with the blue color? 
Okay, now initially this point one is in contact with the tibial condyle, right? Now when femur femur rolls on the tibia, this is a posterior rolling. Short, uh, hip joint flexion is the posterior rolling. When it rolls on the tibia, you can see that the point one comes up. Point two makes the contact. Almost point two makes the contact. And if it rolls again. Point 0.3 is making the contact. So every time new point is coming in contact with the tibia. Here mostly uh, the tibial condyle may, may or may not be having new points of contact. The point 0.1 may be pointing in contact with the same point in tibia. Point 0.2 also with the same point 0.3 also may be seen. Okay. But usually it happens in such a way that point 0.1s come in contact with this initial point in the tibia whereas point 0.2 comes in contact with slightly bit more and point 0.3 comes in contact with the another point that is why at the end of flexion the tibia the femur almost runs out of the tibia but in usually in our human body is it happening no that is because rolling is accompanied by the other movement gliding along with the rolling there is glides. that means there is no pure rolling alone happening in the human body it is accompanied by gliding always so you cannot see that changes so you may not understand the new points coming in contact so in general terms rolling means moving segment moving on a new point of contact with a new point of contact in the moving segment also in the uh, supporting segment or in the contact segment also okay so that is the phenomenon known as the rolling so in human body you can find out rolling in different joints for almost all ball and second type of joints you can find in other joints also you can find for example in uh, is shoulder joint in abduction just imagine in abduction okay what is happening the hum humerus is rolling at the same time this movement is happening in the articular surface. This rolling is happening. In flexion, in shoulder flexion, what is happening? The humerus is rolling anteriorly. This is the anterior roll. At the same time, there is the movement happening in the osteokinematic movement. So this osteokinematic movement to take place smoothly, the arthrokinematic should take place. So this is the rolling in happening in the uh, humeral condyle, it happens in the femur, it happens in the tibia and it happens in various joints. So almost all joints are uh, rolling. Okay, so rolling is the movement of uh, one point of contact with a new point of contact. For example, in humerus, the initial point of contact may be this one. So at second movement, the point of contact changes. Third movement changes, fourth movement changes. Clear? Okay, now so this is what is known as the rolling okay and now the second movement that is the gliding which is very easy to understand the same scenario of the tire what happens if you give a sudden brake to your car or motorcycle the tire screams and it moves that means the point of contact may be a it won't change to b that is why you are applying tire it should stop there itself so it may just uh, get stretched over like this if it is not an abs car if it is an abs one definitely it will stop there itself okay it will just scream and just stretches and just uh, uh, lands on there for example this uh, uh, what do you call duster if you call it this duster it is rolling on this it's moving on this uh, ground what can happen is that in gliding the movement will be like this it just comes in contact that same point comes in contact and uh, with the our surface oh, so what do you mean by gliding a same point comes in contact with the articulating surface all throughout the motion that is known as a gliding okay am i correct okay am i clear for example in this movement uh, forget about the rolling thing just look at the gliding so in the femur uh, when femur is moving for a uh, posterior roll or the flexion what happens is that when flexion is happening like this if there is no other some other movement it may turn out like this so to prevent that what happens at this time this femur comes anteriorly femur glides anteriorly this movement is known as the gliding you can see that from here flex as flexion progresses it 
glides anterior ring see that it's glides anterior ring but the rolling is in the opposite direction you can see that pole rolling is posterior so this is glide anteriorly so this is the gliding movement. similar movement also takes place in the humerus humeral humor humerus also the glenohumeral joint also if there is no pure uh, if there is only rolling it may also turn out to be the at same scenario so to prevent that along with that rolling there is gliding happening okay gliding movement is also known as a sliding movement gliding or sliding movement okay gliding or sliding movement so at this scenario what happens is that the same point contacts same point comes in contact comes in contact with the same point comes in contact with the articulating surface that is known as the gliding there there was a different points coming in contact and finally we have the last motion that is known as the spinning movement before telling about spin here i want to tell you that in human body these two scenarios rolling and gliding almost occur simultaneously in the joint rolling and gliding are accompanying in the joint for example in the same uh, femur example when it is going for posterior uh, flexion there is a posterior rolling like this at the same time there is an anterior glide posterior roll plus anterior glide you might have studied in the knee joint biomechanics which we have discussed very uh, detail okay so rolling and gliding of course takes place simultaneously spinning it's a simple movement you know that you have seen the what is a spinning movement okay it spins around a particular point okay it comes around an axis when the movement is happening around a particular axis this movement is known as the spinning movement one fixed axis at the joint surface moves can you give an example for spinning movement the simple example is that radial radius movement okay radial head movement what happens in uh, with the annular ligament of course is attached like a band over here now during pronation and supination what is happening this one rolls on like this one spins like this okay this one spins like this the radial head uh, spins like this on the on the ulna on the ulna radial notch of the ulna so here what happens is that uh, for example, if I mark some points in radius, let us look at what is happening. How can we define that? Point 1, okay. And second point, let me mark with another color. Third point, no need to mark, okay. Now, when, during this rolling phenomenon, let me take the first point is in contact. That red color is in contact over here. What happens when rolling progresses? The second point comes in contact. What happens when rolling progresses? Third point comes in contact. So in rolling, there is fixed surface remains or contacts only the same point. There is no different point at a particular point in the fixed surface. The movement is taking plus the moving segment uh, makes contact in the new points with the fixed points in the articulating surface. So that is what happens in the spin. It is just a rotation around an axis. Of course, there is no pure spinning movement that is happening in the human body. Spinning is, of course, accompanied by rolling and gliding movements also. Okay, you will understand that later. So, the in do, during rolling, what happens is that uh, in the rolling surface on, or in the rolling segment, new points comes in contact with the different po same point in the stationary segment same point in the stationary segment for example uh, i told you now um, this is the humeral uh, femoral head movement okay femoral movement in which movement in uh, hip flexion so when you look at this movement you can see that when this rolling and gliding it taking place at the simultaneous time you can simply tell it as a spinning movement so we call it as a spin of the femur can you look at from that aspect what are you feeling you can feel that there is a fixed axis piercing through here and this one is just just spinning on it that is because there is a same amount of rolling and gliding taking place. There is a the rolling and di gliding uh, ratio that is taking place. That is making this joint as a, appearing to be as a pure spinning movement. As a spinning movement. Not pure spinning movement. Spinning movement. That is because new point on this surface 
comes in contact with the fixed points on this one a relatively fixed point that is because of the gliding also taking place so we feel it as a spinning moment so in human body when rolling and gliding can occur at the same time they may be seen or they might be uh, considered to be as a spinning movement so humeral head we can say there is rolling and there is gliding so we can say that the humeral head like it spins on the which one uh, glenoid fossa but if you want pure spinning movement we can give example of a radial head moving on the ulna the radial notch of the ulna in pronation supination that is just a pure spinning movement so these are the uh, difference between osteokinematics and arthrokinematics. You should understand that these are not different type of movements happening. These are all part of a system. These are all part of a kinetic chain or a chain. So these movements are essential. You cannot differentiate. You cannot just have roll in one and uh, you cannot have osteokinematics in another. For osteokinematics to occur, arthrokinematic movement should synchronize. When that synchronization decreases like in case of injury like a periarthritis shoulder or any injury or old age then you have pain then you have restriction in range of motion etc so this for the osteokinematic movement to occur smoothly pure or um, smooth arthrokinematic movement should happen and in human body since it's a three-dimensional motion or curvilinear motions that are happening you don't have pure rolling or you don't get pure gliding or sliding but a combination of motion is the result and that is happening there is a very simple rule that helps in understanding the rolling gliding mechanism more in detail that is a concave convex rule which we will discuss in the next session until then stay tuned and if you like the video don't forget to click the like button and kindly subscribe to our channel